we have our uh, DC DC converter and all we need to do is to close the feedback loop using a suitable controller. We saw that the response from this V alpha to the output, what is the transfer function? Sorry, V out by what was it? V s by V r times the low pass transfer function. Okay. So, that has a magnitude d c magnitude of v s by v r and, and it peaks up to approximately v s by v r times q, where q is r l square root of c by l and eventually goes off as minus 40 d b per decade and this frequency is about 1 over square root L c. The phase does that. Okay. So, now any controller that we have to use V ref is the reference voltage and that is the intended desired output voltage okay that is what we call the reference voltage so this H C times V out by V alpha this is the loop gain and it should have the appropriate phase margin. Okay. So, where did we say we will place the unity loop gain frequency below 1 over square root L c, so that the phase shift contributed by this is negligible and the controller essentially determines the parameters of the feedback loop. Okay. We also want H c to have a high gain at d c. Okay. In fact, the highest gain is obtained if you make it an integrator, okay. because then you have infinite gain at d c, is not it. Let us say, I mean we will uh, uh, add it and see how it works. Okay. So, let us say H c is of this form for now. Then what should be this parameter omega c? If H c is an integrator okay, and if I plot just the magnitude response of H c, what will that look like? What will be the magnitude response of H c alone by itself, if it is of this form, if it is an integrator? what is it? Integrator, yeah. So, it is minus 20 dB per decade everywhere and we also expect that omega c should be somewhere there. Okay. And the phase of that will be minus pi by 2 everywhere. 
and what will be the total loop gain? What is the total loop gain going to be? The magnitude will be just the sum of these two on the log scale. So, it will essentially up to this point it will get scaled by V s by V r. Okay. and it will do something like this. And eventually fall off at minus 60 d b per decade. Okay. Actually, if I show it to scale, it should look like this. Right. So, that is what it will do. And the phase, of course, is also the sum of these, which uh, will start from minus pi by two, go to minus pi, and minus three pi by two. Okay, because the LC network has two poles, and the integrator has another pole. Eventually, the loop gain is of third order. So, the very high frequency magnitude drops off at minus sixty dB per decade, and the phase lag at very high frequencies is minus three pi by two. Okay. Now, the way I have <coughs> drawn the loop gain, is this okay? Will this be a stable system or will it have a good phase margin? Yeah, yes, you does it have a good phase margin? Yeah, it does. Huh? Yeah, where is omega u now? The way I have drawn it. <coughs> hmm? Where is it? Is it more than one over square root LC? Near that or below that? Where is it? Before, really? Which curve are you looking at? Which is the relevant curve here? The blue one. Uh, so, where is the unity gain point of that one? Yeah, it's here and the phase like there is something like that. So, clearly the way I have drawn it, it does not work. So, what do we have to do to fix this? Huh? Yeah, omega c should be further to the left, it cannot be like this. So, that may have to be omega c. So, can you tell me like one particular uh, value that it has to satisfy, so that uh, it is a well behaved system approximately? You understand? Huh? So, where is the critical point? Which point of uh, V naught by V alpha would you look at, so that you can decide omega c? Huh? It is definitely less than, but where should it be? Should it be like 100 times less than, 10 times less than, just less than? At uh, 1 by root LC, the magnitude of what? Why should it be 1? Which is the sort of worst case here? If you look at the magnitude of V s by V alpha, which is the point that is kind of spoiling the loop gain? Where is it? Huh? 1 by root L c, it is peaking there, right. So, what you want to make sure is that the attenuation of the integrator at that frequency is at least as much as this peak value. Okay? 
So, then what happens is when you multiply the two uh, even at this point the product will be below 0 dB you understand. So, at 1 over square root L c V s by V r has its uh, peak and sorry V s V out by V alpha I think I this is the d c gain is V s by V r uh, V out by V alpha has its peak and the peak value is V s by V r times q. Okay. So, when you multiply H c, so H c of uh, s which is j times 1 over square root L c should be less than the reciprocal of this. Okay. You understand this? So, essentially H c it is uh, decreasing with frequency and it should be such that it will push this point the peak of uh, V s by V r to point below 0 d b okay? that is the idea and it should be sufficiently well below 0 d b in that case what happens is the composite unity loop gain frequency will be somewhere there that is what we wanted. right? When we said I wanted the unity uh, loop gain frequency to be the left of it it is the, the unity loop gain frequency is the product of H c and this uh, V naught by V alpha. Okay? the unity gain of that should be to the left of this where the phase lag is kind of negligible. So, that you get sufficient phase margin okay? because remember the integrator always gives you 90 degree phase lag. So, at some point over here V naught by V alpha has about let us say 30 degrees phase lag. If you make that the unity gain frequency then you will have 60 degrees of phase margin is this okay? So, clearly omega c. So, now can you give me a like better constraint for omega c what is it? Less than what is that I could not hear what you said. Yeah, Basically, this is minus 20 dB per decade. So, the ratio between these frequencies is the same as the ratio between these magnitudes. Okay. So, omega c should clearly be less than the natural frequency of the uh, LC network divided by the peak value of the transfer function. Okay. In fact, it should be a little bit less than that, so that you get phase margin. This is okay. So, then what happens is the composite uh, loop gain curve, it starts from somewhere here and even at the peak it stays below 0 d b it should stay sufficiently below 0 d b. So, that you do not get a bad uh, phase margin. Okay. So, you can have a problem if a loop gain goes down and then it goes below 0 d b and then goes back up above 0 because of peaking because then the phase at that point where it crosses unity again that is what matters right? as it falls down. So, this is how it has to be. So, essentially what you want is this H c to be an integrator or a low pass filter. So, that the maximum magnitude of V naught by V alpha gets pushed below 0 d b okay? and of course, then you have the uh, detail to worry about you have to make sure that at the unity loop gain frequency the phase light due to the integrator of course, will be minus 90 degrees. and the phase lag due to the L c network should be let us say less than 30 degrees. So, that you have 60 degrees of phase one. This is okay. What do you think happens if the phase margin is too poor here? The phase margin is let us say 5 degrees what will happen? Why do we want the phase margin to be 60 degrees or 70 degrees or what would be the bad effect in the DC DC converter if uh, Yeah, not only too long to settle, the output will overshoot past the desired value, right? That can be quite dangerous. Okay. Any questions here? So, it is the same uh, loop gain uh, phase margin things that we have been calculating with op amp circuits, except that here 
uh, it is more in the form of a controller and a plant as it is called something that is being controlled. Okay. The controlled part has some frequency response that you cannot avoid because we have to make a, a lossless DC DC converter, we have to have the switches and L and C. The L and C give you some uh, phase lag and a second order response, there is no choice here. Okay. So, now you have to pick the controller suitably, so that even now what are we doing? It is still like dominant pole compensation right, up to and slightly beyond the unity loop gain frequency you have a single pole roll off minus 20 dB per decade that you always have to make sure that is one way of uh, stabilizing circuits. Okay. So, you have to so, what will the unity uh, loop gain frequency be if you uh, make sure that all these criteria are satisfied? What will this be? Give me an approximate expression in terms of let us say the integrator is some omega c by s. Okay. How do I make that? How do I make an integrator? Yeah, you can do it using an op amp, right? It is like an inverting amplifier except that the feedback element is a capacitor instead of a resistor. If the feedback element is a resistor, you get the gain to be ratio of resistors. Now, you get it to be impedance of the capacitor divided by resistance. Okay. So, what is H c the transfer function from uh, here to there in this case? So, let me call this like R c and C c what will be H c? Please calculate it this is not difficult. Just H C, what is it? Hmm? Minus one by C C R C. Okay. So what is omega C? The unity gain frequency of the integrator by itself. One by R C C C. Okay. Do you see anything wrong with this picture? I mean, sign. So it should have been plus. So how do how do we fix this? What is that? Really? Like this? Connect the output of what? Okay, there are two possibilities this or that. Which one should it be? Uh, but that would not be an integrator. You are saying what should I do with the resistor, this end of the resistor? If I connect it here, what should I do with this resistor? Ground. Okay. So, what is the transfer function from here to there? What is it? This circuit you have seen so many times and it is slightly different with slightly different components. What is this? Is a non inverting amplifier. What is the gain of that? 1 plus yeah. Okay. Will this work? Yes or no? It actually could work, but it is not an integrator. Okay. You could also make it work because this also has a gain of infinity at uh, 
zero frequency, right? So this could. Oh, sorry, this won't work at all. Yeah, scratch that. Why will this not work? Huh? Yeah, yeah. So what? What is that? Exactly. So we wanted to push this point below 0 dB by having a small gain for the integrator, but uh, if this is what the gain of that will look like, right? So it will follow this red line and then it will do that. Okay. So it will never attenuate it. It will never push that peak below 0 dB. So this won't work at all, isn't it? So you need an integrator transfer function. You can't have one plus an integrator. Okay. So let us say I go back to this, is there a way of fixing this? The transfer function from here to there surely is this one, this is correct if I make it like this. Okay. So, how do I fix this? What is that? Actually what is wrong with this actually? Okay, I have a negative sign, so what? I mean this is what you say after every quiz, right? <laughs> Huh? Yeah, it is not negative feedback, that is a serious problem. That is why we also do not give marks, right? We need to give negative feedback to you. So, so how do you fix this? How do you make this now? This is now, now ends up with positive feedback. It is a very easy way to fix. Huh? Another resistor parallel to? How will that help? No, the only thing that it will do is uh, instead of the transfer function being like this, it will go up and it will have a finite DC gain, that is all, right. It will become a low pass filter. At DC, the gain of this is infinite. If you connect a resistance across the capacitor, the gain becomes finite. That is the only thing it will do. You understand? No, this is not, I think you are uh, thinking along like very complicated lines. It is extremely simple. Just look at. Huh? Yeah, so that is all, right? That will do it. You will still, you are still taking the error. There is another inversion in the loop, and this takes care of it. That is all, okay? So, what were you asking, Karthik? Oh yeah, I mean you can always have a minus one here. That will work, right? Because then that will make the comp combination of these two have a plus sign. But yeah, that will need another op amp and so on. So you don't want to do that. What should be the signs of the op amp? The upper one is it next? Huh? Minus plus. Yeah. So in this case, there is minus plus. But please remember, this does not have to be the case. Okay, You can have circuits where for overall DC negative feedback around the op amp, you could have plus and minus like that. It is not where this component is connected. It depends on the sense of feedback around the whole thing. Okay, So, you could have this to be plus on top, minus on the bottom and still have virtual ground as long as there is some DC path with negative feedback around the entire circuit. Okay. In fact, when uh, you have multiple op amps and feedback, that can happen. Okay, so this is what we need to do. Now, in reality, because of the finite DC gain of the op amp, you can evaluate it yourself. This integrator will not be perfect. Okay, that means at some uh, value, it will have some finite DC gain. That is okay as long as the DC gain is large enough, you will have accurate control. The effect of DC gain is the following, right? If this truly had infinite gain, if this integrator had infinite gain, what happens is this voltage, when it settles, settles down, it has to be zero. Okay, so that means that the output and VRF have to be exactly the same. Okay. Huh? 
Oh, because there is feedback around the whole thing, right? So, for instance, so let us say this starts with the, this starts saturated to positive side. What will happen is this V alpha is very large, right? So, that means that the duty cycle almost goes to 100 percent, okay? So, that means all of V s appears here or some large voltage appears here and that large voltage will drive the output down, right? Because if you have a large voltage here, then it will push the current this way and drive it down. So, there is DC negative feedback around this. If I did not connect this rest of the circuit around it, this will not work. Okay, this rest of the stuff has DC uh, transfer function. In fact, you know it has a DC gain of Vs by Vr, right? So that's why it works. Okay, so this you understand? This is okay. That's actually a good question. I mean, because especially in the beginning, you have to be careful about where you are getting negative feedback. Especially you have integrators like this. What look like ideal integrators, right? Because uh, many classes ago, I said these ideal integrators, you cannot make them work. It will drive itself into saturation. So, a sort of quick fix if we wanted only an integrator was to connect a large resistance across the capacitor. Now, we are not connecting a large resistance because we do want integration from here to there, but we also need to have a closed loop between there and there. Otherwise, it will not work. Is this okay? This is absolutely essential. I mean, you cannot make any high gain system in a way you cannot make it without feedback because high gain necessarily means high sensitivity, right? High gain is another way of saying it is highly sensitive to the input. So, some small change here can drive the output into some useless range. So, any high gain amplifier however you make it will eventually have to have some DC negative feedback so that it comes back to the right region, okay? Yeah, yeah. so we will see. So, there are many uh, ways we can try to do that. So, let us see how to realize this. Actually, there are many other variants of uh, this particular topology. Oops. So, before I go there, however, to because this part I have still left it as an abstract summation block, we will fix that. Okay. So, the transfer function of H C was 1 over S C C R C. Okay. So, what is the unity loop gain frequency of the entire loop? What is it? What did we say it was? What is the unity loop gain frequency? Hmm? Omega C times V S by V R. Okay, because again, uh, in this portion, the integrator integrator always has minus twenty dB per decade, and in this portion, it is getting amplified by V S by V R. Okay, I say amplify. Who knows? V S by V R could be less than one also, but whatever it is. If the integrator by itself has unity gain at omega c, integrator times V s by V r will have unity gain at omega c times V s by V r. Is this okay? Omega u loop is omega c times V s by V r. Okay. What will be the closed loop bandwidth of the system? What is the closed loop bandwidth of the system? So, that means that let us say I step the value of ref for instance, because so far I wanted 4 volts to be the output, now I want 5 volts. What is the relevance of the bandwidth? Why do we even talk about bandwidth? I mean, what are all the reasons why we might be interested in bandwidth? Huh? No, not stability. We will assume that we will make a stable system. Okay, we have a stable system. So, why should I even con be concerned about its bandwidth? 
yeah. So, there are different types of scenarios right like for instance if you take an audio amplifier you know that the input signal can be in the 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz range for full music ok. You want to faithfully amplify every one of them I mean all the signals within uh, that band. So, the bandwidth uh, has to exceed that so that all the signals there are amplified in the same way. So, that is one uh, reason that is you do expect signals of different frequencies and you want it to work for this range of frequencies. In fact, that is true in every case, uh, but in some other cases uh, it may not be that you are applying sinusoids at different frequencies, but let us say the input changes and a way to model an input change is a step that is one of the ways to model it. Then uh, the system will take some time to settle down ok. So, the bandwidth is also a measure of how long it takes to settle down right is not it. I mean normally we think of bandwidth as the way we do it is we apply sinusoids of uh, various frequencies and look at the response, but you, I mean just make an analogy to a first order system. First order system has a time constant of R c and a bandwidth in radians per second of 1 over R c ok. So, bandwidth and time constant are related in higher order systems the relationship is a little more complicated it can ring and so on, but if the response shape is the same but the bandwidth increases that is you simply scale the uh, frequency axis it will also respond faster to a step does this make sense. So, let us say if uh, h of t has a Laplace transform h of s ok. What is the inverse Laplace transform of h of alpha s? You know this scaling theorem, uh, huh? 1 by alpha h of t by alpha, ok. Now, if h of s has a bandwidth of some omega b, what will be the bandwidth of this? Omega b by alpha. Okay. So, going from uh, here to there if alpha is smaller than 1 you are increasing the bandwidth and if alpha is uh, less than 1 you are decreasing the alpha is greater than 1 you are decreasing the bandwidth ok. And what can you say about this h of t by alpha and h of t? Let us say we take alpha equals half. So, that means that the bandwidth has become twice as large ok and h of t and h of t by alpha what is that? Huh? It is shrunk, it is faster the same it has the same shape, but the whole process has become faster by a factor of 2. There is an inverse relationship between the bandwidth and the time domain response. So, that is another reason why we discuss bandwidth it is like a proxy for saying how fast the system is. So, in this case maybe that is more relevant because to a DC DC converter you are not likely to put sine waves and see whether it follows sine waves. It is actually done in some cases, but if you use it as a power supply you do not want that type of stuff. But we are concerned about bandwidth because we do want to know if we do change the reference voltage for instance because I want to go from 4 volts to 5 volts how fast will it actually settle to 5 volts. I mean bandwidth is a measure of how long it takes is this ok. I mean we calculate many things it is also good to know why we calculate what we do. So, now what can you say about the bandwidth of this? First of all what is the bandwidth of the system the closed loop bandwidth? What is the approximation we always use for a negative feedback? Yeah, if it is well designed and if it has good enough phase margin omega u loop the unity loop gain frequency is a good estimate of the closed loop bandwidth ok. Again the logic is simple below the unity loop gain frequency you have nearly ideal behavior and above that you do not ok although the transition in reality is gradual. So, omega u loop. So, now look at the expression for this. So, this is basically 1 over C C R C times V S by V R. Is there something slightly undesirable here? It is a vague question, but I mean maybe does it depend on something that you would not like it to depend on? Depends on V S the input voltage ok. That can be a slight issue in that the input voltage drops the bandwidth drops and it increases and actually if the input voltage becomes very large it can even become unstable right. Because who knows I mean you thought that 
the input voltage would be so much, but V s is much larger. So, that means that the DC gain V s by V r is larger. So, this peak will not get suppressed to below 0 d B okay. and there is a simple way to fix this. How is that? To make the bandwidth not vary with the input voltage, what should you do? Well, there are only like so many quantities there, right? <laughs> Yeah, so you make the peak of the triangular wave proportional to V s. Okay, so what happens is that uh, if V s increases, the triangular wave amplitude also increases. In that case, it doesn't have to be equal, but it has to be proportional. That's all. So then uh, you will have. I mean, obviously, if V r is some uh, beta times V s, then you have one over C C R C times one by beta, where beta is some ratio which can be fixed accurately. Okay, so clearly this is a good design practice so that the bandwidth doesn't depend on the battery voltage. Okay. I mean, this is how you usually proceed with design. You make something and find that it has some undesirable stuff. The reason we do analysis is this. Uh, that's why we make many approximations. But with all of that, you should somehow be able to capture what influences what. Okay. May not be exactly. Maybe something goes linearly, whereas you think it goes a square or something like that. But at least, if you feel that hey, something has to be increased, and that's correct if you uh, predict the direction of the dependence correctly then it's a good thing okay so that's why even like crudely approximate calculations are very helpful okay because finally what you want to know is which way to move things okay because nothing will work the way you want the first time around so you will have to tweak it this way and that way because uh, this is not a question of calculation it's a question of modeling i mean this is in general true of any science right so there is the modeling part i mean you model the artha some flat plate and then you do highly accurate calculations on it. There are some things that you simply cannot predict, right? How this is not related to how accurately you did the calculations. But once you assume that the earth is flat, there are some things that just go out the window and some phenomena that you can't capture. Okay. So in general, modeling is more difficult than modeling is basically capturing the physical reality. That's more difficult than making accurate calculations. Accurate calculations also may be complicated because the equations are too complex and so on. But somehow you have the computer. You somehow or the other you can do that. Okay. But uh, Figuring out uh, the correct model for whatever it is that you want to model is difficult, and also an, an exact model you can never have, right? Almost never you will have. So you have to make some approximations. So you have to somehow figure out uh, the approximations which will keep the key features that you want, but drop out things that you don't want. Okay. So that's what uh, the difficulty is. So finally, what you want to capture, especially with hand calculations, is which way to move things. Okay. The dependence doesn't have to be exact. In this case, they are not too bad. They are also accurate. But uh, uh, I think many of you had questions about if you assume that A naught times P1 is the unity gain frequency, is it accurate and so on? It's not very accurate. You know that if the non-dominant pole moves close to the unity loop gain frequency, it is quite inaccurate. But still, in most of the cases, it will tell you which way to move things. Okay. So that's one uh, aspect. You you make the triangular wave amplitude proportional to Vs so that you don't have this. Uh, Annoying thing of bandwidth being dependent on uh, the input voltage. Okay. Now, give me ideas on how to implement this whole thing. So, this is the part that is not implemented as a circuit so far, right? That subtraction. So, what are all the things that I could do? Summing amplifier. Okay. So, the suggestion is. What should this be? What should you connect here? Huh? Yeah. Anyway, so if you do this, first of all, if this is VO, this should be minus VF because this gives you VO plus that voltage, right? And also, this itself gives you a minus sign. So, what should you do? So, you need another inversion, right? Yeah, so instead of doing all of that, the suggestion is what 
what will you get here? Will this work? Does this actually work? I do not know. Where if let us assume is a DC, will this work or not? So, clearly this is an economical solution if it works or maybe it needs a minor tweak because it uses only one op amp right you do not first sum the voltage and then uh, uh, invert it and then feed it to this one. Okay. What will be this voltage? Just analyze only this circuit with V naught and V ref as inputs superposition you should be able to recite the answer. What is it talking so long? I mean, what is the transfer function from V ref to V alpha through the integrator? 1 plus 1 by SCR and what is the transfer function from V O to V alpha? Minus 1 by SCR. So, what is the net output? It is V ref plus V ref minus V O 1 by SCR. Okay. So, it has the correct thing that we were looking for it also has an additional level shift of V ref. Any idea how to solve this? Remember this is the term that we were looking for right V ref minus V naught times integration. Okay. How do I fix this? Is there a way to fix that? What is that? Uh, you do not want to do that because the loop has to be active for DC, you do not want to block the DC. Yeah. So, if you if the operating if the ramp instead of going from 0 to V r went from V ref to V ref plus V r you could do that. Okay. So, that is one possibility. Let us say I keep it like this the way it was before. What is the voltage here at that point? 0, it is a virtual short. Okay. So, what is the current flowing here? V o minus V ref by R c okay. and that current flows into the capacitor and that is what gets integrated, is not it? So, however you make this current flow through the capacitor, the same thing will happen. You agree? And that is one of the ways of synthesizing circuits, Maybe like you do not like this part of the circuit, but in the rest of the circuit you should have the same effect by maybe rearranging some components. Okay. In fact, this is related to one of the earlier suggestions. So, if I had only this, okay, what would be the current in through the resistor? V O by R C and the same will flow through the capacitor, but I need to fix this. I need to make it V O minus V ref by R C. Uh, we know V O minus V ref by R C. Yeah, how do I do that? A small modification to the circuit. What should I do? What 
我出这路，啊。Uh, that's what we tried earlier, right? It gives you this plus it also gives you a level shift of VRF. Is there any other way of doing it? Think of uh, what extra current has to flow through CC now. V naught by RC is flowing there. What is the extra thing that you want to introduce? Minus VRF by RC. So, how do I get an extra current of minus VRF by RC? Right? That's all. So, it is the same summing amplifier idea, but you do not use another amp amp for summing amplifier. Anytime you have this sort of inverting configuration, this is you can think of it as a summing integrator, right? That is what it is. Okay. This is fine. It gives you exactly the same current in the capacitor, you agree? Or is there a problem? This should be minus VRF, sorry, minus VRF. Yeah, I said minus VRF, I think I wrote VRF here. So, okay. Now, one more practical thing is that uh, this reference voltage that you have an accurately defined voltage, I mean, you would not get it for all kinds of arbitrary values, okay, because any reference that you want to use that has to be stable, right. So, if you want 20 volts, you can get a 20 volt reference, and it turns out because of some. Uh, material properties that we have, there are very accurate uh, voltages, voltage references that are available known as band gap references, which are 1.2 volts. Very accurate meaning you can change the temperature from 0 to 100 and you can measure multiple parts, they will all have the same exact 1.2 volts. It is related to some property of silicon. Okay. So, if you have this, but of course, the output voltage can be arbitrary. I may want like uh, 10 volts or 5 volts or any other voltage. Okay. How do I modify the circuit now? Yeah, you just use a different RC. So, in general, we do not compare V naught with V ref. So, let us say this is just like uh, in an amplifier, right? We do not necessarily compare the output with the input, we compare maybe some fraction. So, here we get V naught by k and that we can compare with V ref. Okay. You understand? I mean, I can. now what will the output voltage be in steady state? What will this be? What is the quantity that is forced to 0 using negative feedback? Huh? V naught by k minus V ref. Okay. So, what will be the output voltage here? K times V ref, right. The, so, this V ref, let us say you have a fixed reference voltage available like 1.2 volts. By choosing K, you can get any voltage that you want. Okay. Now, this again you have to reanalyze the loop gain because we have an extra attenuation of 1 by K, but that is okay. I mean, all those can be taken into account. Okay, and as far as implementation is concerned, one of the easy ways to do it is by, I mean, don't have RC here. Some other have some other RX. So the total current flowing through the capacitor would be V naught by RC minus V ref by RX, right? And that current will be zero in steady state. So V naught will be RC by RX times V ref. Is this okay? I mean, these are all things that we have done before with amplifiers. How did we make the non-inverting amplifier? What were we comparing in a non-inverting amplifier? The input voltage V i and V naught by k. That is exactly what we do. And here the reason we do it is because the accurate reference, see finally, we have said we want a stable output voltage. How stable will it be? It will be as stable as V ref, that is all. If your reference voltage is varying all over the place, the output also voltage also will vary all over the place. That is not what you want. Now, it turns out this again you will understand only after you take a transistor level course, uh, because of some material properties of silicon, some people have come up with a clever uh, circuit, which gives you 1.2 volts no matter what, okay, over a very wide temperature range and so on, it will not change. Okay. So, typically that is what is used as a reference. 
So your reference is always 1.2 volts, but I can get 12 volts because I do not have to compare the output with VRF, I will compare one tenth of the output with VRF. One tenth of the output is accurately set to 1.2 volts, the output will be accurately set to 12 volts. Okay? So, that is how we do things and to do that only thing is that we cannot compare, we cannot take V naught minus VRF, we have to take some fraction of V naught minus VRF, that is all. Is it okay? And implementation there are some uh, bazillion variants because I mean already you saw that you can connect it there, this here and so on. Some of them will have some practical advantages which uh, you can think about when you come to actually be building the circuits. Okay? How did you make the stuff in the lab? What uh, which of the topologies did it resemble or none of this? Huh? VRF? Ah, okay. So, VRF at the non inverting air, yeah that will also work. Okay. Now, I earlier said you have to level shift the ramp, I mean I said that because then it looks like nothing has changed right, because this voltage has gone up by VRF, this has gone up by VRF, but as long as this voltage the output of the op amp has sufficient range to vary, it does not matter. because finally, the integrator will drive it to the right point, okay. because let us say because of this extra V ref you start off with a very high duty cycle, because of negative feedback it will go on reducing V alpha until it comes within the range of the ramp. Okay. That uh, setting that I mean changing the ramp by V ref is not important, because the integrator will take it to the right level anyway, you understand. You can think about it, what happens if you this still goes from 0 to V r. What you have to assume is that the output of the op amp does not saturate, okay. That if that happens, you have finished. These op amps here, this op amp, it has to operate within the uh, within its uh, saturation limits for the ramp, okay. So, because it should this V alpha should be, I mean, it should be able to produce V alpha, which is anywhere between the bottom of the ramp and the top of the ramp, okay. So, the ramp level should be within the saturation limits of the op amp, that is all. Please think about these things. I think once you do a couple of tutorial problems, it will be clearer. <laughs>